All right, let's get rolling here. Um, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Um, great team win um, at a really, I think, a difficult place to play in Stillwater at Oklahoma State. Uh, really proud of how our staff and our players responded. Uh, I thought we competed um, really from the opening to the close. Uh, I thought several guys stepped up. You know, we talk about a next man up uh, philosophy, and I think you saw that on Saturday. Um, I'll recap the game kind of like we always do, uh, just to give you a, kind of an idea. Um, I'll start just like team-wise. I thought we started fast, which was a critical factor, and we talked about it a lot um, because we felt like we'd get their best coming out uh, after losing two in a row. On the turnover margin, two to two, we got two picks. We didn't turn the ball over at all. And then the time of possession, which is a combination of all three phases, you know, 42 to 17. You're going to win that most of the time. So um, special teams, the, the things we got to get better at, we allowed the explosive return on the, on the cross field kick there. We got to be better at that. We just didn't, we didn't cover it very well. And then Ali's got to have a better situational awareness on the one where they ran into the punter. He should have got that out faster. Um, the positive special teams wise, um, our op times are really good. You know, whether it's field goal or punt, man, we're getting we're, – our op times are really good. And then Preston fielded every one of those punts. And probably common fan doesn't understand how difficult that is. First of all, that's, that's one of the toughest venues with sun. So the way it sits down in that hole, when you're going toward the closed end, kind of as the sun's setting, man, that sun is right in your face. And he did a great job. Plus, they, they, they punted a righty and a lefty. So spin on those balls are totally different. And so him fielding those were, were, were key. And our PAT and field goal protection was really good. And so, so happy in that regard. Uh, defensively, things we got to continue to work on. We had two dropped interceptions, so missed opportunities. One of them would have been a pick six. That's the second one of those we've dropped this year. We got we to catch the ball better defensively. And then uh, 0 for 2 in the red zone. You know, they got it down there twice. Good news is they only got it down there twice. Bad news, they scored touchdowns both times. So we got to continue to improve that. I think there's some things coverage-wise we can we can continue to, to work on to be better. The positives, you know, by far our best performance. They had 36 rushing yards for the entire game. That's 1.7 yards per rush. Into possession downs, they were 4-12. Um, they only had 11 first downs. They only played 45 plays, but only 11 first downs. Uh, we had two takeaways. thought we tackled really well. That's the thing. Um, as I was watching it live from the sideline, I felt like that. And then when I watched it in the plane on the way back, I'm like, man, we, we tackled really well. Uh, we pulled our pin. We went and got it. Um, offensively, things we got too many negative yardage plays still. We gave up two sacks. One of them was on a quarterback, but two sacks and, and, and had some negative yardage plays in the run game on some run throughs late that shouldn't happen. Um, and then just poor execution on two fourth downs. One of them was a, uh, I don't know what, you have to ask Garrett what he's thinking on the early slide there. But um, on the other one, we just poorly executed on the first fourth down there in the first drive of the second half. We we had that we sh we had people to block those. We should have we should have got that. So that was disappointing. The positives: 389 yards rushing. We six six yards per rush, 10.6 um, yards per attempt. So we didn't throw it a ton, but when we did, we were getting chunk plays. Uh, we had 31 first downs into possession downs. We were 11 of 15. And then, man, we broke tackles. And then if you take out that taking a knee in the red zone, um, you know, we're six for six in the red zone, five touchdowns. And so we really felt like coming into the game, it was going to be a line of scrimmage game. So who could run the ball better? Turnover margins and then touchdowns in the red zone. And so we won all three of those clearly, and, and thus we won the game. So um, the uh, just going back in our award winners for the week that we do after we win, Offensive linemen, and we had, we had as a group, anytime you rush for that many yards, you play well up front. And I thought Brandon Yates may have played his best game of the year, but the guy that was the offensive lineman of the week that graded out the best was Tomas Remack. And uh, he, was, he was the most productive. I thought he got movement at the point of attack, played really well. Uh, his best game this year so far. Um, special teams-wise uh, is, uh, is Austin Brinkman, and he's just – he's elite. I, I've said this, nobody knows the, the – the snapper, unless something goes bad, thankfully it hasn't. But he's elite. Uh, he, he's done a great job. I thought Ty French played really well on special teams, too. You know, um, that's a that's a, a name. Uh, defense player of the week, six tackles, a TFL uh, pass breakup in the end zone and an interception was Josiah Trider. And he continues to get better. You know, and he's going to be he's going to be special before his time's done here. Um, other guy of note defensively, Jaheim Joseph. I thought he was really good. Um, and then offense player, 
19 rushes, 158 yards, 8.3 yards per carry and a touchdown. Did a really nice job in blitz pickup too, and that was Jaheim White. Um, with Blue Collar, these are guys that played well that don't show up in the stat sheet. Offensively, I'd already talked about Brandon Yates, but Cole Taylor played his best uh, – uh, game blocking and then CJ Donaldson we asked him to do a lot of lead blocking in the game and and he executed at a high level defensively uh, two guys that that weren't on the stat sheet a bunch but really controlled the line of scrimmage and a big reason why we we only allowed a yard 1.7 yards per rush were were for Torma and Sean Martin both those guys uh, played really well and then I already talked we gave a, a blue collar award to Jaheim Joseph too because he came down and really mixed it up and pulled a pin and tackled those big running backs did a nice job um, our developmental guys this week um, on offense, Tyler Evans, who, who does a nice job for us. Defensively, it was Donovan Grayson, and then on special teams, it was T.J. Johnson. All three of those guys kind of keyed our success. So those are the guys for, uh, for the awards. And then turning the page to, to Iowa State. So another big game on Saturday. It's kind of life in the Big 12. It just You win one, and, and you're on to the next one. And that's kind of what we did yesterday. Um, you know, this one's a special one just because we're paying, uh, we're, you know, we're wearing the Coal Rush uniforms and um, paying homage to the to the West Virginia mining industry. And so I think it's important. It's an important game for our state. And our, I know our guys are looking forward to wearing that and, and all the stuff that goes with it. A uh, ton of respect for Iowa State, what Coach Campbell's built there. Um, done a really nice job. Talk about them each phase. Special teams-wise, they blocked two punts, which obviously catches your attention. And then – 13, who's one of their leading receivers also. Um, he, he's an excellent returner. Um, and their, their specialists are really good. He, they, the kicker made a game-winning field goal. Their punter's got a nice average. Um, they're doing a nice job with their specialist. Uh, offensively, they're balanced, uh, very multiple. Um, they've ran the ball extremely well the last three weeks. Um, you know, they, they, they shift, they motion, a lot of different tight ends play. Um, I think it starts with them, with, with Rocco. He's playing at a high level. Um, and, and I pull for him every game. This will be the first time I don't pull for him, you know, when he rolls in here. But uh, um, great kid. And, and we'll also be honoring his dad, who's a Hall of Fame. He's obviously watching his son play uh, when we did that versus Kansas. But we'll honor him. We'll honor, honor Anthony um, during the game on, on Saturday. So um, look, looking forward to honoring him. But Rocco's playing at a high level. He's keeping plays alive, very efficient with the football, um, and, and, and executing that – or running that offense at a really efficient level right now. They've got two re, uh, receivers that, that are playing really well, Higgins and Noel. Um, they move them around. They do a nice job of, of getting them the ball in a bunch of different ways. You know, they're kind of running back by committee, but they're playing – they're all playing – all three of the guys they play are playing well right now. And again, multiple tight ends. Those guys are kind of growing up on the job. So – that gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, defensively, uh, Coach Haycock, he, he's done a great job there. I mean, they've got a system that's in place. They've been doing now for a number of years. Uh, he's got answers. Um, does a really good job countering within a game. You know, statistically, you can look at it. You know, it, it speaks for themselves. I don't, I don't need to get up here and talk a whole bunch. You just look at the stat sheet, and it tells you what you need to know about them defensively. Um, they mix up coverages. Uh, I think their defensive line, they've done a nice job recruiting big bodies that are long. Um, that kind of makes the defense go because they eat up gaps. And, and then they in, in the back end, 17, the middle safety. And then uh, number seven, those, those two guys are – they're big bodies. They're 220. They come down and, and make it hard on you. So really good on defense. So we'll have our hands full, but, but looking forward to it. So with that, I'll take questions. Barry. So, sort of a follow-up to what we're talking about after the game Saturday in terms of your run game improvement. Not that you've been bad, especially offensive line-wise, but it seemed like that was the best performance Saturday of the year. Was it? And, and where is that growth? How, how has that come over the course of the year? Yeah, so it definitely was. Uh, I think, first of all, it was a good matchup for us. You know, I think um, it, we had some good matchups, especially in the interior uh, in the game. But that's the best we've played. And, and it's really about execution. Um, we did a nice job. I thought communication-wise, we've done a good job all year. And when I talk communication, it's, it's O line and tight end, make sure we all know who's working to the people and getting it identified. Um, but I thought we've been doing a nice job of that all year, led by Brandon Yates. You know, I think this our, – our fundamentals, and we really – I think the bye week helped us in that regard. But when I say fundamentals, I'm talking about tight ends, running backs, O-line all together, and the quarterbacks too because they're a piece of that. Um, we were much better fundamentally. And then our receivers really helped. And, 
you know, we started talking about in this bye week because I was trying to paint them a picture where they really understood is like our run game is an all 11 approach. It's not, you know, because we do so many things on the perimeter, we do so many things in the read game, we get receivers, you know, so like it's an all 11 approach. I thought the guys bought into that and, and we blocked better on the perimeter and we, in versus man covers, we did a better job of running them off and getting them out of there. So it seems pretty self-explanatory, but why did the program throw the, the 1-0 and on the wall over top of the schedule of the facility? Yeah, just, just because like we were getting a bunch of questions about, you know, how many ranked teams we played, how many, you know, what the rest of the schedule looks like. And I'm like, why even show it to them? You know, and I'm like, you know, let's, it's, it's next up. I think that's the way that you got to approach our league now is because every, every, you know, and y'all heard me say this a bunch, like the good thing about this league is you got a chance to win every week. Bad thing about this league, you got a chance to lose every week. You know, like there's really good coaching. Um, I think the, the talent is pretty evenly just distributed, but uh, among the league. And so, for us, it's, I think it's just better to keep our eyes on exactly what's in front rather than worrying about anything in the future. you got a plan that's working and you start eliminating things. Was there a lot that you had in there? that? Because I remember you, you mentioned not throwing the ball to the running backs. That was part of the plan. When you're going through that, uh, you just start saying, okay, this is working. Take this away. Yeah, so I think when you get into a game plan, you got your, your plan, how you're going to start, and then you got your counters kind of off of that. Um, and so when we got up, you know, especially when it was a four, a three to four score game, you know, like there's not a reason to do some of that stuff. Um, and, and they did a couple things different too. Like they played a lot of bear in the second half. That's not something they usually do except in a goal line situation. Uh, they were fitting a couple things in 12 personnel differently. Um, you know, I called a couple of the pass plays to get the ball to the running back and and they switched it off differently than they had. And so, but broader, broader scope is you go in, okay, this is, this is planned. And if they do this, I want to counter with this. Um, and then we just got into a really good rhythm running the football. And that's kind of what we, what we st stuck with. How are you health wise? You know, um, Justin Robinson was close last week. He practiced today and I think he'll be back. The rest of the guys that got injured in the game, um, I'll know more probably through Wednesday. Um, I don't know if all of them will practice maybe till Wednesday, but uh, I'm hopeful. There's nobody that's definitely out as of right now. Your defensive guy says they uh, got together after the pit game and had some heart to heart. What's still as a head coach? What's your feeling on groups doing that within the team? And, uh, I, think, I think accountability is important, but I don't know if meetings I don't know if that shit really matters you know what I mean like it's about going out and you got to work you got to practice but I do think accountability is important and sometimes accountability occurs in a meeting room um, sometimes it occurs in the practice field um, we talk about ownership a lot and we try to we try to um, really show that from a coaching perspective like I, I try to be honest in front of the group when when I make a mistake or when I call a bad play uh, or we do something that doesn't put our guys in the best position. And, and the position coaches and coordinators do the same. And we try to model that. So when you do make a mistake as a player, you can take ownership of that. And then you hope that you have older guys some veteran guys that will hold other people accountable. You know, and whether it's watching film on your own, whether it's doing the workouts, whether it's, you know, doing stuff after practice, et cetera, you want some accountability. And so I think that's probably the most important piece of it is – is defensively, you know, there's probably more accountability. We're doing, we, we simplified, you know, um, we went back to basics. Uh, we've tackled pretty well all year. We just haven't covered as well. Um, but I thought Saturday, that was the best we've executed our zone coverage. You know, we did a really good job. We had two sacks, which nobody sacked them all year. I think they had one coming into it, and both of them were coverage sacks. Now, the guys that got the sack did a nice job continuing to work, but those were coverage sacks. And so I thought we did a better job of being in our zone droppers, finding, finding crossers, et cetera. I, I think it's helped. You know, I think it's helped. I think it's been good for him because you can't see better there. I mean, it's, it's obvious. Anytime you're up high, um, you can definitely see better than you can on the field. Um, I think, and I said this last week, somebody asked me, what it does when you're in the press box, it takes the emotions out of the game. Now, you'll have to ask him if that's better or worse for him. Um, but it does take the emotions out of the game because you're so far away. Um, 
And so it's much, it's much calmer there. It's more peaceful. You can do some more thinking. Uh, you can be more organized in between series because you, you're sitting at a table. You know, I think there's some benefits to that. Did you see a difference in the way the defense approached practice and kind of the way they went about things after that pit game when after they kind of talked to each other kind of had that accountability discussion no i don't know we practiced pretty well it's been more of a performance issue um you know if i really saw us playing the past that poorly in the in the first three games you know i wouldn't have talked about how i thought we were better all fall camp you know what i mean um but we practiced pretty well i think what we i think just execution and understanding the details of what we're doing and then reducing the the package of coverages that we were playing has been helpful um but I, we weren't practicing poorly before we just weren't doing our job on saturday now i think what happens is and we had some success versus kansas and and so doing the thing little things right in the fourth quarter and you're and you maybe have some aha moments like um, any of you all that have kids, there's going to be a time at some point where they're like, oh, yeah, oh, you're right. Well, well, yeah, but you got to learn some hard lessons along the way. So, um, but I think there was more some of that, some aha moments that, oh, yeah, if we do these little things, we can be, we can stop people in the past. We can be good on defense, you know, and I think that spilled over to the bye week. And then um, we played, we played really physical. We strained, and I thought we executed a high level on Saturday. Um, what has kept Haycock uh, above the curve, I guess? I mean, you've studied this defense. He's been around for 10 years. Um, it's it's, it's kind of mm -hmm. like pulling teeth. Why has he been able to stay ahead of the curve? You know, that, that's a question you'd have to ask him. You know, you've you know, got to um, prepare for it. You know. Yeah, we've played against him. I don't, I don't know him personally. Yeah. Um, got a lot of respect for him from his coaching perspective. Um, I think what happened, like this is my opinion, when you're in a system um, that – that you've been in for a long time, you're always tweaking, but you're able to have answers. And and that's that's something I tell our young coaches a lot. Okay, they'll have a great play. I'm like, okay, but what if they do this? Because you got to have an answer. You got to have a counter. Um, and he's got great answers. You know, if you look at their stats, they're you know over you know really since we started playing them, I know this. They're a lot better statistically in the second half than the first half, and that tells me because of coaching, they're able to fix things that that offensive are maybe taking advantage of them. Um, the other thing too, I think that's that's as offenses is, have become more multiple and there's more pre-snap movement and stuff. When you play that front, is there's not a whole lot of box movements, and so there's not as many moving pieces with that group as there is with some others. Um, but you know, just playing against him, he stays steady. Um, you know, I would say, I don't know this, but I would assume like, um, that, you know, I think he does a really, he's got some good people helping him like on game day and, you know, in game prep mode because they, they have good answers. Conversely, as a play car, you have to have answers to those answers. Yeah. So yeah. It's a chess match. You know, that's kind of the fun part of it, right? Is yeah, these, this is, this is a you know, a, a game that you get excited about just because they're so good on defense, and he's so good. They're, yeah, no question. Wyatt talked about feeling like the offensive line clicked this past week going into the Oklahoma State game. Would you agree with that assessment, and what maybe did you notice know different in them leading up to the game collectively? Yeah, I, yeah I think the, the chemistry in that room has been pretty good all year. Uh, I think what you're seeing is Brandon Yates getting more comfortable at center. You know, it's a tough position to play. Um, and there's a ton of communication into it. Um, you know, when a, a team has multiple fronts like Oklahoma State. And so I think you're seeing the maturation of him playing center, and that's helped the, the entire offensive line. Um, I, I would say that as much as, as anything. I think there was a lot of confidence in our plan last week um, because we were able to be, we were able to do different things, but it was the same picture for the offensive line. You know, I think anytime you can do that, um, it gives them an advantage. And so, but as far as how they've prepared, that room really over the last couple of years, man, have done it at a really high level. You mentioned his efficiency, but what are some other things that you see in Rocco Beck that are, are, that are allowing him to play as, as special as he is? Right well, now? I think he's highly intelligent, and they do a lot of things offensively, and you, you can only do what your quarterback um, allows you to do, and they do a bunch of things. And I think that he does a really good job manipulating safeties with his eyes. He's got good touch on the ball. Um, I think he's he's like he's a sneaky runner, man. He's he's a good athlete, 
And what he does, he extends plays. You know, I saw a deal where they were comparing him to Brock Purdy, which I don't think it's ever fair to compare anybody to anybody. I don't think that's – but when you watch him, like, he's operating that offense very similar. They're they're operating very similar to how they did when he was there, which is a huge compliment to Rocco. Um, and um, he's keeping plays alive. He's just doing a nice job. And he, you can tell he's playing a lot of confidence too. I'm a ball watcher during the game, but I did notice Liddington. What, what was your thoughts of him when he got in there? Yeah, did a nice job. I mean, you could talk this – like, we talk about this a lot, man, is next man up. And you better be ready so you don't have to get ready. And I think there's a lot of examples of that. Um, if you think about it, Landon goes in and we go down on a touchdown drive. You know, and it, it wasn't just like a one play. It was six, seven, eight plays. And he played and executed and did a nice job. And I think that – um, and we have confidence in him. You know, Nico comes in and we had – he threw a touchdown and we went on a touchdown drive. You know, he didn't have to get ready. He was already ready. Um, you know, I think Boyce on defense. You know, he had to play 21 snaps, I think, on defense and made one critical error. But other than that, played pretty solid. And and so I think that just speaks to – and, again, coming off a of bye week where guys like that got a bunch of reps, I think that's that's helpful also. Yeah, what did Cora give you? Was that a bit of a surprise? Who'd you say? I'm sorry. Kekora, Tarnu. Oh, yeah, Tarnu. All right. KK is much easier. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, here's what here's what he did. So, during the bye week, we started playing him at uh, at Spear. And he's got flexibility. So, if you go back, he's kind of had an interesting career. But Excuse me. Uh, he's had an interesting career. But through his career, he's played nickel, he's played corner, and he's played safety. And so, he played safety here early. Um, but he's got good coverage skills. And so – you know, if you remember versus Kansas, we really got stuck in, like, having to play three corners, and they hurt us in the run game with that. So we wanted to get another bigger body if Aubrey got hurt again, which he unfortunately did. And he'll, he'll be back this week. But KK was able to, to go in there, and we were able to do the exact same stuff that we did with Aubrey. And, and I thought for his first game at that position, he practiced for two weeks. And for his first game, made one mistake that really hurt us. Other than that, uh, I thought he performed well. And he'll continue. I think he's played himself in a position to continue to play. I know Crandall didn't play much. Did he finish the game or did he come out? No, he played. Okay. Yeah, Crandall played. Um, he played on special teams, and he played in the second half on defense. He didn't practice much at, uh, last week. I think he started practicing maybe Wednesday or something like that. Um, uh, all those, like, intangible stuff, like Jaheim said, everybody's more familiar, they're more comfortable. You mentioned just kind of simplifying things. But, like, you, that's, you don't uh, mind Jaheim Joseph? Uh, just secondary. Yeah. Sorry. So that's, that's how it's supposed to, like, shape what's happening on the field. Like, what's – fundamentally football wise better as far as like the plays that are happening or, or aren't happening for that matter well so in the run game we haven't played we played pretty i would say above average with the exception of uh the kansas game all right and, and some of that was because we just played a light box um and so but we played to run well um I think that we've tackled well for most of you. Now, we tackled at another level on Saturday, but we've tackled pretty well um, heading into that game. Coverage-wise is our – so when you do this, regardless of what zone coverage you're playing, is you've got certain – and I've said this before, you've got certain landmarks, you've got certain depths, and then there's different rules built in, whether you're condensed, whether it's teams extra wide, whether you have crossers, et cetera. You have to have some built-in rules. And so I think as we've simplified, um, what we've done is we've got a better understanding what those rules are. We're executing those rules, and we're doing a better job of getting to our landmarks at our depths. And and so it's kind of boring, but that's really the reason why we're playing better. Have you seen the ball better as a result? Because you know, like yeah, dropped interception, but you guys we are did. Plays so too. part of it is. Um, and, and we may, as the year progresses, it may even be this week, get back to where we're playing some more man coverage, which we did early in the week, early in the year. Um, but what that did is really hurt us on quarterback scrambles, and we didn't have vision on balls. So when you play zone, you have vision on on the football, and so we do have more eyes. That's a that's a fair assessment. Um, but we got to we got to make those plays. With an eight o'clock game, what's the head coach's day like? On game day? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do. Um, so we'll start everything a little bit later. You can't you can't just let them s sleep in um, as late as they probably would like. So we'll usually get up and go by nine or so. We'll we'll, we'll staff meet and then we'll do uh, a breakfast, and then we'll come over here to the to the IPF and and do our walkthrough and and kind of move around a little bit more um, because it's such a late start. 
usually we just stay at the hotel. We'll probably come over to the IPF and do a stretch and uh, and do our special teams on our offense and defense walkthrough. We'll go back to the hotel, get a light lunch, and then we'll give them about three or four hours downtime. Um, and and then we'll do our pregame meal, team meet, and do the man trip and get ready to go. Uh, it's just longer, you know what I mean? It's just – it's uh, – I try to I try to exercise at some point. Um, you know, we'll have a bunch of recruits here, I'm sure. So I'll do some visiting with them. Um, but the the later games, um, I'd really kick them all off at 11 or 12 because I, I can have a normal day after that. But uh, but I think our fans like the eight o'clock better. And it is good to have some night games. But I, I say that in just some. But um, but it's not it it's really not a whole lot. It's not a whole lot different for me. It, you get some downtime right in the middle of the day. You know, everything's hurried up. The earlier you play, man, it's hurry. It's it's a it's a hurry up mode. So it's a little bit calmer day when you play at night. Which does not leave you the iPad or the phone? That you neither. I, I I'm not like um, usually by the time there's. I'm thinking about some things for the quarterback on Saturday as far as from an offensive perspective, but we're not adding. We're not. You know, I'm not sitting there watching what they're doing on on Friday or Saturday. It's kind of it's kind of done by then. The uh, the the phone. I'll, I'll watch a little bit of some games. You know, especially if it's people we're going to play. Um, but I'm not I'm not sitting there watching the pregame shows or anything. Speaking of Green, just where is he now for you? More mistakes through the first four games than probably you would have liked. But mm -hmm. it seems like the last two games certainly there's a difference in his confidence and play. Yeah, I think he didn't play very well. Versus Penn State, which you know, which I stated, he he was fine. He was he played pretty well against Albany. I think that's the best completion percentage he's had. And then um, the the pit game, which is kind of up and down. You know, he wasn't as accurate, but he he made some good decisions. He made some plays. You know, especially in, in that third quarter, he made a bunch of plays. And then the Kansas, like he he went into win. You know, really in that fourth quarter, he was special, and um, he really. Y'all don't see this, but he made some checks and stuff in the game, some run checks and some uh, protection checks in that game on Saturday that were were really good to see from a from a quarterback that's that's maturing. Uh, I thought his decisions when to run and when not to run were good, and he was accurate with the ball, you know, with the exception of two go balls, you know, and it was windy. I don't know if y'all could tell that on TV, but it was it was it was pretty windy there. So um, I'm pleased with his progression. I think his best is still out there. I mean, your players weren't aware of this, but this is the third 5-0 and team on your schedule. Obviously, you're aware of that, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of it. You know, I think – but, you know, the thing that I think about is this, is I'm disappointed that we didn't – you know, the pit game was winnable and we didn't win it. I'm disappointed that we didn't play very well versus Penn State. But we're not going to go back and – they won't allow us to play them again, you know. So, um, it's kind of – Water under the bridge and kind of on to the next, and and we got a bunch of really good teams on the schedule. But the flip of it is, it's a good schedule. I mean, good, solid, outstanding. Oh yeah, players. we're playing good people. Yeah, yeah, we're playing good people. Um, I don't know if anybody cares. You know, I always, if you're five and zero, oh, we don't play anybody. All that matters is you're five and zero. Oh. I mean, that's the truth. Um, but the thing that it does is our guys aren't going to blink in these games. You know, they're not going to blink. It's it's kind of this is the um, you know, this is kind of just the next really good football team we play. Um, and so our guys, when, when we start talking about the next opponent, whether it's Iowa State or Kansas State or Arizona or whoever's after that, is they're like, oh, okay, they're going to be really good. Well, just like the other teams we played, are, you know, so our guys aren't going to blink, and it kind of is what it is. And we just got to get ready. We got to get healthy, and we got to get mentally and physically ready to go for Saturday night. Time because the you said you didn't see the Penn State game. Yeah, right. here's the thing: like all the other stuff that, that that was around that game, like we're just not gonna allow that for this one, and just kind of put our blinders on and go. You know, you, I think when things don't go right, which obviously didn't go right for us Penn State wise, you gotta go back and really evaluate, and um, and so we probably made some decisions going into that 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 weren't in the best interest for some guys, you know, as far as I'm just talking about exposure and things like that. So kind of minimize the distractions this week and just go about playing football. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Right. Thank you all.